let's start with the third leg of our grand tour. Our reporters are crisscrossing Germany all summer long. This time we head west to the Ruhr Valley and the Theater der Welt Festival. This week our reporter Melanie Mateos is off to the Ruhr Valley, Germany's most populated region. Her first stop is the city of Essen. I've always liked the rural region, but 2010 is a very special year. As the European capital of culture, things are really moving in the Ruhr. One absolute highlight is Germany's most important international theatre festival, Theater der Welt. Three weeks of top-class performances. Melanie sets off to see what Theater der Welt is offering this year. A street theatre performance, for instance. A troupe of dancers from Vienna are showing their piece Urban Drifting. It looks a bit like students moving house. Bizarre contortions on hot asphalt at more than 30 degrees Celsius in the shade. I will call them definitely when I have to move the next time. But that's not all, by a long chalk. The audience follows them right through the city center. Nothing escapes this troupe. They stay in one place for just a few minutes and then they move on. You make living sculptures. Why? What do you want to convey to an audience? I want them to reflect on their surroundings, the surroundings that are created for them. Surroundings aren't God-given, people make them. And every one of us should have an opinion about that and be allowed to express it. There are also humorous elements, for instance, a lady hanging from a parking meter. Of course, I'm also trying to win over people, and if you do something funny, it's easier to do that. Her next stop lies just a few kilometers from Essen city center, the Zollverein World Heritage Site. This former coal mining region is renowned for huge, disused industrial complexes like this one. Theater is especially fascinating in venues like this, the Zeche Zollverein in Essen, a monument of industrial heritage. Once a cathedral of coal mining, it's now a grand center for culture. Let's see what is happening here. And the venue really is fascinating. The pithead baths where the miners used to shower are now a dance center. On stage, an experimental work by the Norwegian theater company Verdens Teatret. A quirky, poetic, mechanical world. Usually this company's work, a hybrid of performance art, concert and installation, can be seen at art festivals and in museums. It was multimedia crossover artists like these that the organizers of Teatre de Welt were especially keen to showcase. And this time we were looking at linses. And, and how lenses uh, could be used in different ways. And we looked at the old, old way of making uh, projections on walls. And, but, uh, and suddenly we started to build these apparatus. We took uh, one year to make. We work and work and work and, and get the material. And we don't know where it will go, if it will be an installation, if it will be a concert or performance. Right next door, there's another troupe. Choreographer Eri Mefri's ensemble from West Sumatra. Their dance piece is a mixture of martial arts and folklore. <laughs> the organizers of the festival are fascinated by experimentation. They want to expand the concept of theater. The second day of our reporter's journey through the Ruhr region takes her to Mülheim, the second of the two cities in the region that are hosting the event. Here, a performance is taking place in a more conventional venue, the Civic Center. But it's an evening filled with magic. <laughs> 
Charcoal drawings by the South African artist William Kentridge form the backdrop to Claudio Monteverdi's early Baroque opera, performed by wooden puppets with singers behind them. It's an utterly delightful staging of the story of the travel-weary Odysseus and his return to his wife, Penelope. There's a lot on offer at this festival to whet the appetite for theatre. In three years' time, another German city will host the theatre productions from around the world. But the Ruhr region has set the bar high. I've certainly had a lot of fun here. Mm -hmm.